Hey, what's up guys? This is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting a brick wall. We're going to be using hard brushes. We're going to see some sketching techniques, light and values and how to paint hard textures. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with a cube shape. I'm going to explain you how to do that in a few seconds. But the thing is that we're going to start with values and I have my cube, sh my cube shape. And now what we want to do is go to image adjustments and hue and saturation and you can change the value of the of the faces of the cube to make it look more three-dimensional now what i'm doing is some points to guide myself on where the lines are going to be i put them in white to to see them better now i just scale them because it has a little bit of perspective i need to got it correctly and now what I'm going to do is using the shift uh, key on the keyboard, I'm going to put those points together. Now in a few seconds I'm going to explain you more detail how to do this for those that don't know how to do this. But I just wanted to take a quick look. Now for the vertical lines I'm just using again the shift, the shift key on the keyboard and erasing the spaces that I don't need for the bricks and the same thing we're going to do with the other lines the ones that are in the middle as you can see right now okay so how to make the cube i use in the beginning is really easy you just have to use the selection tool this make a square then you're going to use the paint bucket and you're going to make a square just like that gray any color you want then rotate it uh, and scale it in different um, sizes as you can see what I'm trying to do here is to look symmetrical vertically and horizontally then when you press enter you you can change the scale vertically like this and then what you're going to do is just going to copy that copy that layer and scale it uh, vertically again I think I better scale this one because what we're trying to do is make the perspective uh, look good. If I had another uh, layer on top, it will be something like this, more uh, thinner. And you have one more, it will be like this. So basically, that's what happens with the perspective uh, once you get to the horizon. <clears throat> so I want to keep just these two. And what I'm going to do is this. Normally, the brush comes with the with these settings, the shape dynamics. Um, you can you can get this window with F5 if you don't know how to get it. F5 on the keyboard. And just going to deactivate this shape dynamics so you have it like the same size all the time. And what you're going to do is just um, connect the, the the tips the tips of the of the cube something like this something like this then you can just use a bigger <clears throat> and that's one way to create a cube without using lines it's really easy uh, especially if you're starting to paint without line art this is one way to do it then you can have some lines um, to guide yourself using the shift um, to create lines it's really easy to do this stuff so what we're going to do is we're gonna have these lines and it's really easy because you have you just have to put uh, you have to make one point you press shift and then you press it when you want to end but we're going to be doing some guidelines first and we're going to use points so i'm going to do little points where i think how much uh, thickness of the of the bricks i want to have something like in there i guess and then what i'm going to do is going to take this and and the line in the center should be bigger because of the perspective a little bit of perspective so we have to scale it so it kind of kind of match the distance between the, the points. 
and then using the the shift as we already talked about you're just gonna do click on one point you want to press shift and then to the other one and then shift and then to the other one and you click shift to the other point shift again to the other point and that's it you can just do that and make your lines when we have this in two separate layers we can go to image adjustments and within hue and saturation you can change the colors and you have to put uh, colorize to change the color of the of the cube and i selected the top part to put it gray because i want it to be of that color um, then you have to do wigs like if you you can make this uh, other side a little bit darker again using the same technique selecting using the selection uh, lasso the polygonal lasso tool changing with the hue and saturation um, you can change all that it's really really easy to do and at this point you are not too much concerned about uh, big decisions you just want to have another ingredient in your painting I made a simple palette of colors with difference um, in, in value and in, in hue and color everything to make some variations in the color of the bricks. This is really important because the more random you do them the more realistic it's going to look at the end. And the darker color I just took it to make some kind of like old, old kind of uh, wall thing you know like uh, details of of uh, rust and, and all this um, damage of the time um, on the street and everything and I took the gray color and make some kind of like really dark gray spots um, we're going to use that to make it look like concrete later sometimes when I'm not too sure of what I'm going to do and I need to sketch something uh, what I do is I, I make um, an adjustment uh, layer and you can find it here There's a little button here You can see all the changes that you can do on the image And all the changes that you do are going to be applied um, under this layer So I'm going to change the hue and saturation Because what I want is a lighter image that I can later uh, draw on top but it's just the, for the purpose of sketching. And most of the time I, I put get colorize on and I use blue. I don't know why, but I really like how it looks blue, everything when I'm working and I put it really, really light. If I want it lighter, I just copy this layer. And now I have two levels. If I want to change something and, and I want to sketch something up there, I just activate these layers and this will allow me if I create a new layer is that I can just draw on top and see what I'm actually doing and doing in looking at the at the thing that is in the bottom without um, <clears throat> pressing too much attention on that so this really helped me out when I'm when I'm about to sketch then what I do is I just deactivate that or if I'm sketching something that I want to draw, like I'm going to do, I don't know, it could be whatever. Um, let's do something, a uh, weird shape here. Let's do something like a really um, broken thing going on here. Uh, sometimes what I do is I pass this really rough uh, sketch to the bottom of the layers and I got it in blue again. And then I can do um, more um, define version of that sketch like a line art and this really helps me out when I'm sketching it's a really nice technique to to a sketch just wanted to share it so because I wasn't too sure of what I was going to do with the details I had to sketch something up and that's a, the technique I just, I just explained you a few seconds ago is exactly what I'm doing right now I just made a new layer and then I'm just sketching how I think the details uh, of these shapes could be. Now the sketching part is really more like 
the feeling of the things and not too much the details at the beginning so you have to you have to work the whole image at the same time without trying to concentrate too much on one spot uh, you can concentrate on one spot when you are really um, um, like you have to do something really little or it's really important to focus on some part but uh, right it's just a sketching you know it's not like a line art that you're going to use later so look what I did I just passed that to the to a lower layer so I can see it in blue and then I just paint uh, in another layer on top I just uh, keep drawing to see some other details that I, I I need to do without getting distracted with the one I did before once I got my ideas more clear I can now proceed to a better version of the of the basic coloring which is uh, basic coloring with a little bit more of detail as you can see I'm trying to fill some um, spots that I had I hadn't had before doing the sketch and in some parts I even do some improvisation uh, trying to fill some other details um, knowing what what I already know after I did the sketch um, is a learning process okay so the brush that I'm using right now is a hard brush I haven't used any soft brush in this tutorial yet so that's um, that's because I really need uh, to look at it um, really sharp an image from the far if you use like if you use this kind of um, brush in a lower um, opacity like if you use it at 20% something like that maybe you can see that you can you can find um, almost the same result that you will have with a softer brush just that they look more sharp and detailed and right now what I'm just doing is just tracing vertical lines and then um, doing another and another but it's, it's kind of like in a repetition um, kind of a stroke it's not, it's not like this, this is not it's more like repetition and you, what you get is something like this sometimes I do, I do points like spots that helps too um, but you get, you get to a point where you just do like random shapes too and you feel more comfortable with it and what happens is that you gain control and this is this is one of the most important things that I, I think you should learn in digital painting to control your brushes to achieve the result that you want one way to get quickly results on your shadows is by selecting and then changing the brightness and contrast. Uh, you can just change the brightness. Uh, I needed to do those fixes before going to continue with my painting. And notice that I'm using a really hard brush. It's just that I'm doing little tips and points with the tablet. And that's why it looks that way. Um, what happens is when you use this kind of brush, the result is a really really sharp image more than if you use a soft brush um, some people at the beginning use a really soft brush to paint which is good for painting stuff like skin or at least the basic part of the skin uh, but for stuff like walls or really something really sharp or, or something hard like a hard surface is difficult to do with a soft brush it's not impossible but you don't get the same feeling and right now what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of more of uh, dark colors to it because I thought it needed uh, looking at some reference you have you gotta have constantly uh, reference in some parts so what I'm doing now is just selecting few parts of the image that I want to make brighter uh, to get the color from those parts so this way I've just selected and go to image brightness and contrast and then just using the eyedropper I can select those colors and start doing my my really really bright spots on the painting it's a really easy way to get the bright the bright colors of your painting um, you don't want to change the whole side of this painting using those bright bright colors because you started with some 
basic coloring and do, that's like a neutral neutral color you want to keep some of that um, the really bright color is just to give it a little bit more of light in that in that part of the painting now the two red color wasn't working for me so I changed a little bit with to orange and then I changed the brightness and contrast and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the layer um, and I'm going to make it uh, darker because I really need some kind of like a more interesting lighting so I just copy the layer and turn down the brightness and I'm going to erase at the middle part so you can see like there is some, some really cool light lighting going on and a, bit, a little bit more of shadow on the corners so that make, makes it a little bit more interesting and that's the idea you have to always try to improve your painting while you're working on it you don't have to marry your paintings from the beginning if you make a line art you can change it I mean until the end of the painting you have all that, all that time to decide what to do with it and it's yours now I just cut it the that corner of the cube um, with the eraser and I use the light colors the colors that I have on the on the concrete of the left just to make it look like if there is a light back there like coming from that side and that gave a really cool effect <clears throat> so right now basically what I'm doing is you're using the letter I on the keyboard which is for the eyedropper and then the B for the brush constantly changing that and uh, it's important that you gain a speed doing this changing uh, from those keys I to B because those are the ones that you use the most I think or at least that's what I use the most when, I, when I'm painting um, when you want to take the colors that you already have and right now basically it's just detailing, taking those um, colors in the image and with the eyedropper and keep painting where you think you need more detail and lighting and stuff. Um, I want you to notice how it looks from far away because the important thing when you're doing this digital painting is that it really doesn't matter too much when how it looks close when you look really close to it but how does it look from far away? It looks like believable if it looks believable you already got there you have the 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 goal you achieve the goal of the of the painting or at least if you want to paint something photorealistic um, you don't have to do it really really detailed to make it look believable and that's the idea um, you can do <clears throat> stuff like this what I'm doing right now is you're re looking really close um, looks like a painting but if you look at it from far away it kind of looks like a real wall so what what's important is that it looks like a wall not like a painting of a wall and that's the important thing um i wasn't too sure about the colors yet so <clears throat> in a few seconds i'm going to change the color a little bit using the color um type of uh of blending on the layers uh, you're gonna see that in a few seconds So, <clears throat> yeah, right now it's just taking care of details, cleaning some parts that look too much defined and I make it look less, with less definition and stuff like that. Because I don't want it to look too perfect. When it looks too perfect, it looks fake. And that's what we're trying to do here. I'm applying more details to the bricks. You know, more stains coming from the top okay so now I took a brown color I created a new, a new layer and took a brown color and just put it in type of um, in, in the layer kind of blending is color and you can see the difference you can see how it changes really really uh, dramatic changes on the color and I, I also use a little, a little bit of gray then I changed the contrast and that's it. This is my brick wall. I really hope you like this tutorial. Hey, what's up guys? Um, I know how important to you is to learn how to paint a skin. So I put it together a few months ago, this uh, material that comes with two 
uh, 20 pages of guide and two videos of one hour each explaining detail how to paint a skin like what are the steps uh, the occlusion the shadows everything all the freckles in the skin the hair on the of the beard of the male um, you can learn how to paint a female face and a male face those are the examples that I'm using in this tutorial and it's really really detailed uh, really easy to learn um, step by step and the ways to get it is in my Gumroad account and the selfie is you have PayPal the links are in the description so if you want to make uh, uh, if you want to support this channel this is the best uh, way to do it this is the way I prefer because I I give you something back instead of just taking donations um, I feel like I give you something back so uh, please get into the into the into the links in the description the Goom Road and the selfie and support this channel if you like the material thank you very much